Hi everyone. Some of you asked me to further explain P codes, so I thought I'd review why we have them and how they work. Each test case in MATLAB Grader is either a pretest or a hidden test. Hidden tests don't show any of the code's outputs, which makes debugging hard. Pretests show you the outputs, which is good. You can also see the exact code we use by clicking this arrow down here. We try to use pretests wherever possible. All three test cases in this problem are pretests. Because you can see the code, we need to randomize the parameters in order to prevent any cheating. Workshops are a chance to learn and practice, so we want to give you the answers, just not the solutions. That's where the p-codes come in. The p-codes are designed to show you the answer, but not how to get the answer. When you run your code in MATLAB Grader, you'll see your answer and the actual answer, which is generated by the p-code. This should hopefully give you a starting point for debugging. If we go to Canvas, we give you a template file. This template duplicates MATLAB Grader's test suite. We want you to code everything in your local MATLAB, then copy and paste your script or function to MATLAB Grader once you're done. Within the template, we call the p-code, which we also post to Canvas. p-codes are encrypted, so if you try to open it, you'll get a weird series of characters like this. Anyways, here's the first test case. We have x going from negative 1 to 3 in increments of 1 one hundredth and a equals 0. This means the step function will return 1 from 0 to 3 and 0 from negative 1 to negative 0.01. This is exactly how it is in MATLAB Grader. Next we have the function calls. The first line calls your step function. x and a are inputs and h is the output. x and h will always have the same dimensions. A will always be a scalar. Immediately after that, the test suite calls the p-code. We see that it takes x and a as inputs, but it also takes a third input, which is your step function. It has three outputs, h underscore soln, which is short for h solution, and then we have out and message, which are two exit flags. Let's go ahead and inspect the p-code. This is pretty much identical to the actual p-code we used, with some minor changes for readability. Here are some comments explaining what every variable is. I won't go over it since I kind of just did that, but feel free to pause the video and read the comments if you want. The gist of the p-code is that it calculates the solution h, h underscore soln, and compares it to your h. If your answer is close enough to the solution, the test will pass. Before we compute the solution, the code pre-allocates the solution vector. We multiply 0 by x to create a vector full of zeros that's the same length as x. We can do this because we know x and h, and by extension h solution, will have the same dimensions. Pre-allocation is a great way to enhance your code's performance, and I recommend it whenever possible. If we scroll down, this is the part that calculates the solution. There are many ways to solve this problem. This particular implementation uses for and if statements. We go element by element through x and compare it to a. If our particular x value is greater than or equal to a, the corresponding h solution value is set to 1. If not, h solution is set to 0. Okay, so that's how we computed h solution, so now we need to compare it to your h. This line computes the error between your h and the solution h. And in this line, we just find the maximum error. This line sets a tolerance. This is the maximum error you're allowed to have in order to pass the test, which is pretty small. The last step is to set out and msg accordingly. Out will either be true or false. msg, which is short for message, is a string that gets printed after every test. If the maximum error is under the tolerance, we set out to be true. The message is set to the string, and we print it with fprintf. But if your maximum error is above the tolerance, you failed the test. Out will be set to false, and message will be set to this string. If we pop back into MATLAB Grader, we see that we now have the assert statement. The assert statement is what actually tells the platform if you pass or fail the test. If out is false, it'll trip the assert statement and your test will fail. Read the documentation to learn more about the assert statement. And finally, we have this last little tidbit which basically checks if your code uses the Heaviside function. We tell you not to copy this line into MATLAB because the function isn't actually compatible with your local installation. 
It's exclusive to MATLAB Grader. I hope this gave you a better look into how P-codes are constructed and how they operate. Not all P-codes are like this, so don't assume this applies to every problem. See you soon.